usually people come up and say really nice things about the person who died. And you know, sometimes those things aren't even true. It's as if we forget how horrible that person really was in real life. It's funny. How quickly we're willing to just forgive and forget after the window of acceptance have been shut closed for eternity. After the one who is deceased can no longer care about it because, well, they've moved on. Literally. But fortunately, that's not the case here. Not for you, my friend. Because everything everyone had to say about you was right on the nose, no Pinocchio, no, no, no sweeping who you really were underneath the rug, no nip and tuck cover up trying to give a facade of who we'd like to think you were. No, you, you really were a great person. And that's why it's so hard standing here today knowing that we have to live without you tomorrow. It feels like we've gotten the short end of the stick. Because you were so amazing, so nice, so inviting. I remember the first time I met you, man, just like yesterday. I found you so annoying, oh my gosh. Like, who is this friendly, always talking, always smiling, always asking how you doing, Bible reading on their break, encouraging Mother Teresa, MLK Jr., want to be having dreams, wanting others to live theirs too, sincere, genuine care bearer. I love you. You love me too, Barney the dinosaur. Twinkle in the eye having new guy. I didn't like you. I didn't. But that was just because where I grew up, people like you were always after an Oscar. Given the best performance of their lives, never missing a line. Oh, how they could cry on cue. And it'll just suck you in and get you to believe it all too. And then the director calls cut and the real them shows up. But not you. You are the truth. A hundred, the realest person I ever knew. And it's just so amazing to hear how everybody's testimonies line up about you. What's even more great is the fact that we're not just here to celebrate the life that you lived, but we get to celebrate the fact that you're living again. So all that praising and hollering and worshiping, it was just a warm up. Now it's game time. You make sure you show them angels how it's done, man. But I stand here and I can't help but wonder if this was my funeral, would the same sermon be preached? See, because I know you loved me. Well, at least I thought so, because right now I'm not too sure. Because as amazing as you were, my friend, you were selfish. Because I want to know, why didn't you share Jesus with me? You were so stingy. He was just always yours. I knew you loved him. I knew you served him. I knew you praised him. I knew you read his quote unquote love letters. I knew he was the center of your life. Everything that I knew about him, I caught in your snaps, but never was there a chat brought up. To you, he was the very air you breathed. To me, he was the ease of breath I could have had if an inhaler was handed to me. Why you never introduced me to him? Granted, I ain't going to lie, I probably really would have hated on your invitation. But ultimately, that decision is mine to make. And it feels like you made it for me. If I choose to reject God, that's my business. But at least give me the option to choose. Don't just assume that I'm going to stay lost. If I was to die today, I'm pretty sure... People would really have nice things to say, but what are their bouquet of words after I died if before I was pushing daisies, I was never told about life? Yeah. A truly RIP to you, friend. Because fortunately for you, you received an invitation to know Christ. I just wished while you were living an abundant life, you stopped to give somebody else a chance to live.